Hi, I'm John Mayfield, the real estate tech guy with another Global Real Estate School podcast. Welcome to the podcast. I'm John Mayfield, the real estate tech guy. And today we are going to continue talking about uh, some various definitions and terminology that you need to understand when calculating net income. Uh, We've already discussed effective gross income. And uh, so on episode 058, we are going to dive a little bit further into some of the terminology when looking at commercial properties, apartments, income producing properties, and what you need to know as a real estate professional. So I want to go back to what we've already discussed, which was effective gross income. Now, don't forget, gross income is the potential income you could possibly get from a business or an apartment building or some kind of income producing property. And we use the example of apartments. If you had 20 apartments that were renting for $1,000 per unit, and all 20 units were rented, that would give you a potential for gross income of $20,000 per month. Now, unfortunately, as we've discussed, you may not rent every apartment every month, and you may have some people who maybe are not paying you the rent they should be paying you. So when you deduct what we call your vacancy losses and your credit losses, that will give you effective gross income. So you take the potential that you could get and subtract any losses, which would be in the form of credit losses where you someone doesn't pay or or vacancy losses, you get effective gross income. Now, I know there are some... um, There are some advanced real estate students out there who are saying, now, wait a minute, John, you also need to add in any potential income. And so my new students are saying, potential income? Well, yes, if you had, for example, laundry facilities on your apartment complex, you might receive some income from the uh, people using the washers and dryers there on the facilities. And so, yes, if you have the opportunity to collect additional types of income from um, vending machines or laundry facilities, you would add that in and then you get effective gross income. So to recap and not to confuse you, think about this gross income, potential income you can get if everything's the perfect world, all of your units are rented, everyone pays their rent. That's gross income. But in real life, we have to subtract vacancy losses and credit losses. And then you could also add any potential income you earn off of vending machines or laundry facilities, and that would give you effective gross income. So gross income minus credit losses, vacancy losses, plus any type of income you could receive off of vending machines and so forth gives you effective gross income. And then we deduct all of our expenses and we get what is called net income. Now, on today's podcast, here's what I want you to know. It's very important for you to understand this, that you do not, I will repeat, do not include mortgage payments in your ordinary expenses, okay? So, When you're looking at net income, that does not include your mortgage payments each month. So on today's podcast, I just kind of want to remind you that when you are calculating net income, yes, you use all of the expenses you would normally have, your water bill, the insurance you have to pay, any Uh, staff or employment services, cutting the grass, 
but do not ever include what we call your debt service or your mortgage payments. Those are not included with your net income or, or with your expenses, I should say. So when, you, when you're looking at net income, that's really not taking into consideration what the mortgage payments are. And so once you have net income, you would deduct what we call your debt service or whatever your principal and interest payments are throughout the year. And after you deduct that, you get what is called before tax cash flow. All right. So don't forget, we, we go from gross income to calculating effective gross income to calculating our net income to finally calculating before tax cash flow. So when you take net income and you deduct your mortgage principal payment and your mortgage interest payment, it will give you before tax cash flow. So one more time, gross income, total potential income you could receive off of a property, subtract your vacancy and credit losses. Yes, you can add in any type of small income you might receive from laundry facilities or vending machines. And that gives you what? That's right, effective gross income. Then deduct your expenses to get net operating income or NOI. But don't forget, we're not including our mortgage payment with our normal expenses. So the last step then would be to take a net operating income and deduct our mortgage principal and interest payments, and we get before tax cash flow. And actually, there's one more step, and we'll talk about that on the next podcast. Thank you for listening to the podcast for Global Real Estate School. I'm John Mayfield, the real estate tech guy. Go out and make it a great day.